Welcome to Discovering the Law. My name is Attorney Lucy Rivera, and I am your host for today's program. This program and many of our programs can be viewed at www.discoveringthelaw.net. You could also contact us at lucinda.rivera at discoveringthelaw.com. Today, we have a very special guest. We have Lisa Goodhart, who is the president of the Boston Bar Association. Thank you, Lucy. Welcome to our program, Lisa. It's a pleasure to have you. I'm happy to be here. Thank you for inviting me. And tell me, where do you work? I work at Sugarman, Rogers, Barshack, and Cohen, which is a, a small law firm downtown in Boston. Where you do environmental law. I do. And you're also the president of the Boston Bar Association, also known as the VBA. Yes, and let me congratulate you as one Bar Association president to another, because you're the president of the Massachusetts Association of Hispanic Attorneys, so I congratulate you. Thank you, Lisa, and we're proud of you and strong women on the Boston Bar. What is the mission of the Boston Bar Association? Well, at the most basic level, the mission is to promote justice, mm -hmm. and that really has several different aspects. Um, first of all, we work to enhance access to justice for all within the city of Boston and to improve the administration of justice within our court system and generally. Um, we also focus on um, working to help our members reach the highest level of professionalism uh, and to be excellent lawyers um, in the profession. And third, and just as important, um, we do a lot of work aimed at community service mm -hmm. and having our members um, take the time and have the opportunities to do work that will improve the quality of life for everyone in the city. That um, the Boston Bar Association does tremendous work. And um, what, what is the membership like at the Boston Bar Association? Well, it's very robust, um, I'm happy to say. Uh, we have uh, close to 11,000 members at this point in time, and we've enjoyed uh, growth in recent years, which we're happy about, and especially because we seem to be reaching uh, new segments of the legal community, particularly including newer lawyers who are out practicing 10 years or fewer, and more and more attorneys who work uh, as solo practitioners and in small firms, as well as mid-size and big firm lawyers, and lawyers in corporate settings and nonprofits and, and in government and academia, too. Mm -hmm. So for those attorneys that you're referring to, what are the benefits of joining the Boston Bar Association? Well, many people join at first for uh, somewhat um, professional reasons of self-interest that include networking, mm -hmm. getting to know other attorneys, doing um, continuing legal education programs mm -hmm. and learning more about their area. But I think most of our members find once they get involved that one of the biggest benefits um, is the, the opportunity to work with others on um, pro bono community service and the, uh, the, the, all of the projects aimed at enhancing access to justice and administration of justice. So that's a big part of the, the benefits of membership. I feel that um, the biggest benefit is really just being part of a very vibrant community that's committed to doing good work. Yes, and this is especially important in Boston. We love our city, and the Boston Bar is the, the Boston Bar Association. So what work do you do with the city of Boston? Well, I'm glad you asked, <laughs> Lucy. Um, there, there's an obvious deep connection and commitment to the city of Boston within our association. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the work that we do within the city is aimed at um, educating and providing opportunities to the youth of the mm -hmm. city. And uh, we also do a, little, a lot of work that is aimed at providing resources and legal services generally to, um, to uh, residents in Boston. And that takes a number of forms. For example, for the youth, we have a wonderful program uh, named after one of our former presidents, the M. Ellen Carpenter Financial Literacy Project. Um, that's a project where lawyers who are uh, trained in financial matters and uh, matters like creditors' rights and bankruptcy law 
go in to uh, a group of high school students. We often bring them into a bankruptcy court and tell them how <coughs> things work. But the point of the program is to educate these students about financial literacy so that they'll have the tools they need to manage their own financial affairs. And hopefully, we'll never come back to, to the bankruptcy court as a debtor. And so I think that's very helpful that the lawyers who have that training and skill can share that information to the young people. And we do that as a partnership with the uh, United States Bankruptcy Court, which is very committed to the program and puts its resources behind it as well. Another thing that we do for the Boston youth is um, our program on Law Day every mm -hmm. spring, where we have our members go into different public schools mm -hmm. within the city and spend a day teaching mm -hmm. um, aspects of our legal system, principles having to do with the rule of law, and hopefully giving the students some better understanding of what lawyers do, of the role of law in our society, and why it's important. Um, Things that we do for um, others in the city involve, um, for example, our, our housing, uh, housing Court Lawyer mm -hmm. for the Day program. And for that program, we have volunteer lawyers go into our housing courts and spend a day um, being available to help whomever may need help, typically with eviction matters that are being heard by the court that day and advising and assisting and trying to facilitate resolutions, answering questions for people, and being a resource. Um, that is very much supported and welcomed by the housing court, and I like to think that our members can provide a lot of helpful service that way. I could go on and on with other programs. There are many of them. We also have a, uh, a lawyer referral service. Mm -hmm. That's a phone line. Um, many times people find themselves having a, a legal need they didn't anticipate and they don't know where to turn to find an appropriate lawyer to help them. And so they may call the Boston Bar Association. And our loyal re lawyer referral service is set up so that trained people can screen those calls, identify precisely what the nature of the, the legal need may be, mm -hmm. and provide referrals to that caller um, names of attorneys who specialize in the area that's needed, who, who would be willing to talk to them and perhaps may be able to help them. And where a caller may um, be um, eligible perhaps for legal aid, um, our responders may recognize that and also point them in the direction of those resources as well. So again, it's, it's just a service to the community to help people get the, uh, the legal services that they need. Yes, and the work that you do is so important in the city of Boston. You mentioned to me before this interview that the BBA has commitment to access to justice and community service. Yes. And uh, diversity. Yes. Speaking of those priorities, what is the Boston Bar Association commitment to diversity and inclusion in the city of Boston? The commitment to diversity and inclusion is a long-standing one for us. Mm -hmm. I'm i um, happy to continue mm -hmm. working on it during my term as president, mm -hmm. but it's something that many presidents before me have been working on, mm -hmm. and I expect presidents after me will be working on as well, because it's a long-term commitment. Mm -hmm. And um, first of all, we look at our own legal profession and see the particular challenges um, that uh, lawyers of color and lawyers of different affinity groups face in entering mm -hmm. what traditionally may not have been the most open system to them. Yes. And so we are looking to expand opportunities. We feel that it's very important that the uh, demographic of the legal profession reflect the demographic of the city as a whole. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we have observed as we um, look at the situation and think about how we can help is that there's really a pipeline issue mm -hmm. in our profession. And um, one of the things that's very important is to support newer lawyers just coming into the profession, law students even before they enter the profession, and college students and even high school students who may need help and support and mentoring to even think that the legal profession would be a welcoming one and a place where they could be mm -hmm. successful. So we try to tap into um, uh, our, our, our youth 
and uh, our newer lawyers and support them and mentor them in a number of ways. And, and really, we want to get the message out there that the BBA is um, looking to support lawyers of all different um, affinity groups and help them make their way in the profession. That's done through a mentoring program that is set up and is structured to provide group support, particularly for uh, our minority lawyers and lawyers of other affinity groups. It's also done through, for example, um, uh, a, a cutting edge kind of internship program that we have set up through the Boston Municipal Courts where law students can help support the courts who are very under-resourced, right. but also get great professional opportunity by providing uh, help to a busy Boston Municipal Court judge with legal research and um, can talk to the judge about how they make their decisions and see how uh, the justice is done and see what goes on behind the scenes and hopefully that will help them uh, develop writing samples, introduce them to um, members of the judiciary who can perhaps mentor them if those relationships mm -hmm. develop and give them a head start and a good opportunity that will, will enable them to build, build upon. And all attorneys can volunteer to uh, all these resources that the Boston Bar Association has. Uh, the Boston Bar Association is also very involved with uh, issues in the community and public policy uh, issues and themes. What are the initiatives that the Boston Bar Association supports? We have a, uh, a very robust public policy mm -hmm. agenda, and it's increasingly something that we spend a lot of our time on. Um, there are uh, four uh, primary areas mm -hmm. that I would, I would highlight for you, mm -hmm. and there are many others as well, because we do get involved supporting legislation, mm -hmm. commenting on proposed rules, mm -hmm. um, assisting the courts, um, the Attorney General's office, um, many aspects of our system. But the four things I would highlight for you are these. Um, the first is our commitment to adequate funding for legal aid for the poor. And this is essential to have um, a fair and just society. People who can't afford attorneys um, but need to, to rely on attorneys to assist them with complicated legal matters ought to get the resources they need, especially where fundamental rights may be at issue. So we, we campaign and we lobby up at the State House to persuade uh, the legislature to provide adequate funding. We have a, um, a, a significant event every year that we participate in with other bar associations and other uh, legal aid groups called the Walk to the Hill. Mm -hmm. Um, this year we had 700 attorneys go up to the State House, and that's a very powerful statement, I think, to the legislators mm -hmm. about how the legal community feels about this. We see it every day when we're in court. We see unrepresented litigants who really ought to have a lawyer, and we feel those resources should be provided, so we go speak to our own legislators and we make that statement each year. A second public policy um, priority of the BBA is um, uh, adequate funding for the state courts, for the judiciary generally, mm -hmm. but it's our state courts that are most under-resourced at this time, and in particular our trial courts, mm -hmm. which are really, really hurting now in the wake of several years of funding cuts and a hard hiring freeze that has really diminished the resources that are available in the courts, to the point now where the general public is uh, experiencing those pressures and the, the shortages in a very real way on the front lines. At many courts, for example, the clerk's offices have had to close their, right. close their windows, close their doors for certain hours or certain parts of the week just so they can manage not to get further behind with the backlog of That's work true. because they don't have the adequate staffing. I worry that um, the staffing shortages will affect safety and security in the courthouses because we have some very difficult, tense, taut moments that happen in our courtrooms and we count on the, the uh, uh, court staff and the security offers, officers to keep things safe and under control. So that's a second priority. Mm -hmm. um, 
Third is that we feel it's very important that our legislators provide in the budget each year adequate resources for our district attorneys, for the, mm -hmm. for the criminal prosecution function. It's a matter of public safety and it's a matter of uh, a, a sound, well-working justice system. And fourth, at the same time, we feel it's very important that there be adequate funding for indigent criminal defense. We, we have to have the defense lawyers available to step in and represent people who, who are accused of crimes and don't have the resources to pay for their own, um, uh, their own lawyer. I know you're, you're a public, uh, for, a former prosecutor, and I know that you do bar advocate work, so you understand this very well. We have an adversarial system, and in order to have justice, we need resources on both sides of every case so that both sides can make the right case, the good case, um, and can, can make the best case possible, and then, then the jury and the judge will have all of the facts and all of the law well presented to reach a sound, good, just result. That's the way our system is set up, but it does have a cost. And part of our job as a bar association is to make sure that our, our legislators mm -hmm. understand the importance of funding that. Yes, especially for a population vastly underrepresented and uh, underfunded yes. and underserved. Yes. Um, so, Lisa. All these priorities are interrelated. Yeah. What's the relationship? Well, um, the relationship is this, Lucy. If you step back for a moment, mm -hmm. um, you'll appreciate that all of these things I just talked about are different aspects of our overall legal system, our overall justice system, mm -hmm. and they all impact each other. For example, if we have uh, state courts struggling without resources, if we have not enough legal research, we don't have mm -hmm. law clerks to mm -hmm. support our judges, and we don't have uh, adequate clerical staff to help mm -hmm. people, mm -hmm. then when we have um, poor people mm -hmm. needing a lawyer and unable to get a lawyer mm -hmm. through a legal aid service, mm -hmm. they must come into the courts unrepresented, mm -hmm. lay people, without understanding all the technicalities of the legal issues they may be grappling with, they have to do their best to advocate for themselves. Yeah. That places um, a requirement on the courts to take extra time to explain things to people. People will have questions that perhaps a lawyer wouldn't need to ask, mm -hmm. and that would require the staff to take even more time. It, it may, means it, it takes longer to get through the list of the cases each day. So not funding legal aid places more burden on the court system. Not funding the court system makes it very hard for the court system to really provide meaningful access to justice to the people who may need it and don't have lawyers. And likewise, the relationship with funding the district attorneys and the criminal defense function, we need both of those well-funded or we're not going to have a well-functioning system that really delivers a quality of justice that we think we're entitled to in the city of Boston. Yes, Lisa, so commendable work at the BBA. For our viewers today, our guest today is Lisa Goodhart. She is the president of the Boston Bar Association and we're very proud to have her here. She's an attorney at Sugarman Rogers environmental law. And uh, Lisa, uh, what is the Boston Bar, speaking of um, access to justice, what is the Boston Bar Association's position on sentencing and re-entry of those who have just finished a commitment at the House of Corrections or some correctional institution? Well, this is something that the Boston Bar Association has looked at for a num mm -hmm. number of years. Mm -hmm. Um, one of the things that's uh, great about our association is it's a place where lawyers, uh, both uh, prosecutors and defense lawyers, come together and talk um, very thoughtfully about policy issues involving criminal justice and work on uh, improving things um, for the system as a whole. And one of the things that we've come to feel as an association as a result of our work uh, on sentencing over the years is that it's very important that um, we have sentencing that is smart. Smart in that it is effective. And we think that means not having um, necessarily a one-size-fits-all 
um, view about mandatory minimums that may um, sound like it's tough on crime, but may not be smart and may not be effective in terms of how it plays out. We like to think that, um, especially for nonviolent crimes, it makes a lot of sense to put our resources into programs for, for training, for reentry, uh, through the parole system, through the probation system, through community resources, so that people who may be struggling and may have uh, had a brush with the criminal law system on the wrong side of it, mm -hmm. but who, who have the potential to become productive members of our society are given the tools they need, rather than just locked away because we have a strict uh, mandatory minimum uh, mm -hmm. view that's very tough. So that's our view. We also have confidence, I think, that with uh, a quality judiciary, which we are lucky to have, mm -hmm. um, we would like to think that there's room for appropriate discretion in fashioning individual sentences and individual resolutions to cases mm -hmm. that make sense without having our, our courts be too constrained by a one-size-fits-all legislative determination to apply to every case. Okay, so um, we're running out of time, but I just wanted to ask you, as an environmental attorney, uh, what is the Boston Bar Association's uh, commitment as far, uh, as far as the Task Force on Environmental Sustainability? And, um, well, the, the Task Force on Environmental Sustainability is something near and dear to me yes. because <laughs> I practice environmental law. This is a new initiative that we've started, and the idea is that we wanted to bring together a working group of lawyers to help us think more about how we as professionals can be more thoughtful about um, the way we impact the environment in our own practices and mm -hmm. in what we do. So we're giving a lot of thought to what we can do to practice in more sustainable ways, to look at our own carbon footprints, to think about how we can help our clients with these issues uh, and to make progress. We view that, again, related to our interest in community service. This is something that we feel is part of the, the responsibility of all citizens to be looking at in the year 2012. So we'll be doing a number of things uh, um, over the coming months, including for instance, we'll have a day where lawyers go out and plant trees in the city of Boston oh. in, during the month of April. We plan mm -hmm. to do that in celebration of Earth Day, mm -hmm. but again, to improve the quality of life in the city and to let the community see lawyers contributing in a positive way to the environment. And on that vein, what do you want to tell our viewers about Boston lawyers? What I would really like uh, your viewers to know about Boston lawyers is that they're a group of professionals who are uh, working hard to provide services to the community that, um, by definition, it's a group of people that enjoy helping others who have legal needs and that uh, at the Boston Bar Association, we're talking about a group of lawyers who's very committed to improving the quality of justice and making the city of Boston a great place to live. That's correct. And we love our city. And Lisa, I just want to thank you so much for coming today and talking to us about the important work that the Boston Bar Association does and their role and their connection with the city of Boston. Thank and you so much, Lucy. It was a pleasure. And for our viewers, thank you so much for watching Discovering Justice. And uh, today we learned a lot from Lisa Goodhart. Uh, you can see this again at www.discoveringthelaw.com. And uh, my name is Lucy Rivera, and I am your host today. You can reach me also at lucinda.rivera at discoveringthelaw.com. Thank you all for being here. Thank you.